Yo, yo, this your boy Kevin Lillard right now. We here on WWE TV, Worldwide Entertainment TV. You done know. WorldwideEntertainmentTV.com. Hey! Today on Worldwide Entertainment TV podcast, we got Miguel Maestro. So, yes, man. Could you tell us how you feel about live events coming back to Toronto, like this weekend's Caravan, although they call it Toronto Caribbean Festival now? Man, um, I love it. I love it. I mean, I've, I've grown up in the city um, and being able to, to attend the events and perform on many stages. It's great to see it back. It's great to see the people, the energy, the, you know, the atmosphere, people looking forward to going out. Yeah. Um, I went out a couple of times. I'm going out again. I have a couple of performances coming up. It, it's it's just nice to see the city enjoying themselves again, you know? Okay. So my dad was born in Trinidad and he grew up in Grenada. I grew up, I was born in Grenada. I know your parents were both from Trinidad. How yes. What influence that has had on your life? <laughs> Well, um, I mean, growing up in a very Caribbean home, a Trini home, um, you know, I, I would listen to Calypso and Soka all the time, yeah, um, every day, and uh, you know, I have a lot of influences like Bob Marley and like you know, David Rutter and Mighty Sparrow and stuff. And I think when I was young, I started to do some music lessons. You know, I played different instruments, and mm. the fusion of being a musician or loving music and then listening to the Caribbean culture a lot. Um, it was re really kind of shaped my my you know my 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 heart. It's a love soca so much because yeah. um, my uncle's also a Calypsonian, and he sings Calypso and stuff too. So he would always come home and sing the latest songs and stuff. My dad always played in a band, so I I grew yeah. up in Caribbean music specifically um, reggae and soca and calypso, and um, through that it just the, the the love was there, and that's all I wanted to play, all I wanted to listen to, you know. Okay, I wonder if you're. Uncle knows my dad. My dad used to do soca too. He was oh one, yeah, yeah. He was one of the original artists that started with the the King Show and everything back in nineteen eighty. Okay, what's his name? Uh, Vibrator. Pardon? Vibrator. Um, I haven't heard the name, but maybe he might because my uncle's name is Victorio, and oh, and men okay. like um up here, up here you're talking about. Yeah, up here, yeah. But yeah, he, yeah, my uncle yeah, you, you also went down Trinidad, you know Sparrow and um, Blue Boy and all them guys. Nice, nice, nice. Having that love for the music while you were growing up, how did that translate when you went to um, school and other people were into like different types of music? Well, man, you know, it is it, it, it's quite interesting because I um I went to school in Toronto in Scarborough and I went to school in Markham as well. Yeah. And you know, it uh I I am Caribbean, I am Trini to the bone, you know, we are we are Caribbean people and that's how we always live. So my culture, my influence, everything has just come out. That's just who I am. But yeah. I went to school around a lot of non Caribbean, a lot of, you know, um Canadians and stuff and it was a little different our views are different our you know yeah. our, um, our music choices and everything's a little different but I was still I always influence anywhere I go I try to influence people I, I I play my playlist I play my music I show them what you know when I was in high school I was in a school band um and I was a lead drummer so yeah. I would drum and I play percussions and um we played a lot of different type of music the music the Beatles and this one and that Michael Jackson you know covers and stuff but I'd also be like yo we should sing I do a little reggae do a little soca I like, still Throw it in there just to, yeah. you know, bring the vibe. Let them know, like, yo, there's some really good music out there. You guys not familiar with, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, who would you consider to be top five dead or alive artists for Soka or Calypso? Soka. Yeah. Well, I would like to separate Soka and Calypso because a lot of them yeah. didn't do both. <clears throat> Calypso yeah, is a thing that. that. Yeah, explain the difference. Yeah, because some people don't know the Calypso difference. is something that's a, that's a little older. Is like that's the soul of Calypso. It's, you know, Soka comes from Calypso. So Calypso started with a little. You just beat in a little drum. Or you're, you're, you're strumming a guitar or something, and it was just so easy. It's Gina and Dinah, Rosita and Clementina. That's like guys, Calypso, that's a root. Yeah. And Mighty Sparrow is world renowned as probably the greatest Calypsonian. Um, Lord Kitchener is great as well. Um, 
my favorite, I would say, or like uh, who are up there, Super Blue, who's still doing soca music. He's crossed over into soca now. He's incredible. Um, mm-hmm. David Rudder is a poet. He's like the Trinidadian, um, you know, Bob Marley. He's such a great, great songwriter. Black Stalin, he has won many competitions. He's great as well. You know, people love Black Stalin. And my dad um, Mighty Shadow. Stalin. <laughs> Stalin, good man. But Mighty Shadow is one of my favorites. Super Blue and Mighty Shadow. Those are my you two know? favorite clips. Um, Sparrow has hits after hits. Shadow, you have a kind of, when he has music, is infectious. You must dance. You know? Yes. And you know and, what? Uh, my, dad, my dad knows him. And when I was small, I used to like Shadow. His songs I used to play. And then my dad told my dad told him that, and then he said, yeah, a lot of kids l- like his music because the same infectious thing that he said. He said, for some reason, the kids just draw to him because he just has that, like, fun thing to him, like he had the jokes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's funny he said the same thing because I was like, yeah, Shadow, I used to like Shadow. Yeah, because my dear Shadow have a, like, a, you know, find a little rag and... Put it in your pocket, like you have a little, you have a, a yeah. infectious vibe to music, you know. So yeah, Shadows always a big, big hit, you know. Um, a nice calypso, calypso was that. It was, it was made out of just pure energy and 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 you know, like you could yeah. buy a little corner by a shop. Somebody beating a table, somebody have a guitar, and you just sing for hours. And calypso was it was storytelling. Calypso is a lot of storytelling, a lot of poetry in it. And then from that, in the you know, 70s, 80s, let me say, Rash Ortiai, who is known as the inventor of soca. Rash Ortiai is one of the um, the greatest calypsoians as well. He he fused so the, the soul music with calypso and he fused um, some different genres into this calypso where the, the rhythm pick up a little bit. Yeah. The instruments became a little more modern and the, the, the beat became a little... Yeah. A little faster and stuff. Yeah. And, the, and in soca now, Obviously, fast forward to like in nineties and two thousands, where you know Marshall Montano came into saying, and all the other young like Bungie yeah. and Destra and some of the icons we have today, Cool Win and Kess, um, these guys have you know taken Soka to higher heights and it just they continue. Um, and Soka is something that is just it's like an undiscovered gem still because even yeah. though we love it and we listen to it all around the world, just like Afrobeats, Afrobeats is now picking up. You yeah. know, Afrobeats has been around a lot. Long time we love Afrobeats, and sometimes you can't understand what Afrobeats is say much, you know some of the some yeah. of the you know, dialect. But you're still dancing till you're singing along. You love the vibes, like when a boy and stuff. So I think Ahsoka is kind of on the same path where if if the the world starts to really embrace this and realize how special our music is, Ahsoka will just go global. You know what I mean? It can go all over the world. So why do you think that? Uh, the soca is not getting the same mainstream attention that, let's say, dance hall or reggae used to get. Anyway, dance hall now. Do you think it's because um, the heavy accent difference? It doesn't translate over, like in America, maybe? Because I've seen some people say that about Shansia for her to cut down on her heavy accent to cross over more but some people say but well, that's what makes the artist though so what that's what makes the artist artist i mean like if you listen to if you listen to some african music or some zook or some different types of music you can't understand like even black Mombasa, you can't understand what they're saying even like the song um a perfect example in spanish i love love salsa and stuff suavemente i don't know what suavemente means i don't know these songs suavemente yeah. but the whole party the whole place rocking yeah, we we love the melodies, we love the the, the vibe vibration. So what what was holding back Soka for a while was Soka is based on a festival of two days. Everybody know yeah. Soka music came about and Calypso mostly from for this for carnival, and we have a carnival every year in Trinidad. It's the biggest carnival in Trinidad. We have one coming up this weekend in Toronto, yeah. and it's carnivals all around the world. So Soka music was technically really for that for those events and. Is the only music around the world that really catered towards this two-day festival, you know, and and, and stuff. Yeah. So the music was fast. That was very really jump wave and rags and flags and it's fast. The lyrics were geared towards the carnival, which is like you jumping on the trucks and playing mass mm-hmm. on the road and such and such. And what happened is because you have a niche topic you're singing about, the rest of the world can't really relate. So what happened recently in the last few years, you know, that Sokab started to like the songs I break through like Tempted to Touch, Rupee. 
Yeah. The, the, the Touch by Rupee is an international song because it doesn't speak about carnival. It's just tempted to touch. Even Tune Me On by Kevin Little, it's internationally known soca song yeah. because he's just talking about him in a party with a girl. It's not about a, 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 a truck or a stage or a rag or a flag or a Trinidad, you know, Caribbean culture. So yeah. what so I even cast music like Hello, Hello is international because Hello just talks about Hello. That's it. Like it's just very the good vibes. Yeah, yeah. So for me, the music doesn't necessarily need you don't need to necessarily understand it. You don't need to be able to, you know, even know what they're talking about. You just need to feel the vibrations, feel the energy. I love the melodies. And sing along to some parts like Buena Boy, um, a lot, even um Dance all reggae. Some people, Billy Man has a strong accent. Sean Paul has a strong accent. A lot of our artists have a strong mm-hmm. accent. But the songs will go because they're singing about topics that everybody want to hear about. Mm-hmm. about. They can relate to it. Yeah. So in Soka, that's what has slowly become a little more popular. Like you have your carnival songs, but you have your just your just sweet Soka music that could just play any time of year, anywhere. And everybody could just chip to it and understand it. Just like salsa and reggae and all the other you know, genres. So, talking about the city for Toronto, do you feel the city supports not just the Carabana because that that obviously is one of the biggest events for the year in the city, but the side yeah. projects or I would say side events like the Kiddies Carnival, because I know there's even the event at Ontario Place the night before the Carabana. There's no like a juve. For the juve, yeah. I think um, I think we have, you know, a lot of the artists and DJs who come up from around the world, they call yeah. Toronto the Mecca of Soka. They love Toronto. Everybody knows how much our fans are great, our, our promoters are great, our DJs are great. We have, a, our artists are great as well. We have a lot of artists, a lot of DJs, and we have very, very good, talented musicians and artists up here. Um, And what needs to be done as well as the, the show's, you need to have more representation of local talent in a lot of the, the festivals as yeah. aspect. On the trucks, on the road, um, in all your events, in your band launches, in your in your juvies, in it, whatever events you have, and you must represent and, and, and keep true to the 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 local talent that we have. They do it for the DJs, but they're not supporting the artists as the way it yeah. should be. You know, and to Toronto has the funding, it has the it has the capital, it has it has everything. Like Toronto Carnival. If you look at this week, there's a there's three, four, five events every single day and more for the last two weeks. Every single day, today, tomorrow, the next day, there's tons of events going around because there's just so much to do, and there's so many people involved. So they do a good job in, in the sense of putting on great, great events. When you go out to these parties, you have a great time. But we need to have more local representation, and we also need to be able to invest more into how do we make our how do we make our culture grow. Um, and attract other people. And mm-hmm. you need to support your local DJs, your local artists, your local entertainers to, to you know, so so now you don't, you don't see a show like this week. You see that show with five, six international artists and no local, no local, yeah. you know? I get, I, I've been blessed to like be on a lot of these shows, but, um, you know, some of the other artists don't get a chance. So you have 10 artists and not even one is local from Toronto, open, even if it's an open act. You yeah. must be, you should be. So these are things that, and when you go other places, you can represent the brand. But if you're not getting love in your own city, how could you go somewhere else and and, and try yeah. to receive the same yeah, love? That's an that's a issue, I believe, the urban scene just has in general. Because mm-hmm. it happens in other genres too, the same complaint. Yeah. yeah. But our city is incredible. People love coming to Toronto. Our yeah. carnival is amazing. Some of the events are the best events you'll go to. It's really, really fun. But... Um, I think us as a collective, now this is the first year back, we need to do a better job of having like a start the season early from like, you know, April, May and support when the artists release songs, have some events, have a have a big launch, have um, even if you may, maybe have a soccer competition, you know, just like the other um, islands have, have yeah. your own shows representing local artists, just bring people and engage people towards our culture, you know. Speaking of the culture, what are your thoughts on how it's been sort of Americanized since like the late nineties when the hip hop community saw how big the event was and they started to come down? Like I remember one of the first 
first big artist coming out was Jay Z and Diddy. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and then a lot started, of them love it. Yeah. My my thing about it is that <clears throat> we have one of the richest and most beautiful cultures in the world, and people once you get uh, introduced to it, you'll be addicted, you'll be hooked. Yeah. So, I we embrace everybody from all walks of life. We love people coming in to, to um, our communities and our culture and attending our events and coming on the road, playing mass and caravan a day and stuff. No problem. But you can't go to other festivals and try to take over. And, and do you, you can't go to, you know, Reggae Day or Jamaica Day and play soccer. You can't. You can't go to, you know, I mean, Jamaica, Jamaica, Reggae World, whatever, like big festival and, and, and play salsa, play soccer. You can't. You can't do it. There's certain things that just in different, this is their time. So yeah. for us, we are Calypso, we are Soka. This is what we sing, this is who we are. So if you want to be in hip hop, if you're a hip hop truck or your hip hop, you have um, you know, that kind of energy and vibes and stuff, which is great, you must come and adapt to what we're doing. This is our day, this is our festival. So mm -hmm. if you come in, play Soka, play mass. Don't just come and just stand up and watch. Don't just come and, you know, just like if you want to be you want to just enjoy it and look at it, that's fine. But respect yeah. the mass because the mass, people pay lots of money. To be yeah. on the road in the yeah. costume, look people. nice. Yeah. And they jump down the road in the costume and they want to look nice. And you, hundreds of you guys come in to just take over the band and you didn't pay, you didn't have your costumes, you're, you're destroying our culture. That's our, excuse me, that's our mask. Yeah. So it's something that I find um, just we, we, we embrace everybody. Everybody is invited, but you must come and you must fall into what we're doing. Don't try and change it. I don't want to hear no hip hop on the road. I don't want to hear no other kind of reggae. I don't want to hear it because it's a soca. This is a festival of Calypso and Soka, Caribbean festival. This is what we're here for. And another event, you can have that. But yeah. this week, this few weeks of carnival, carnival is about Soka and Calypso. That's what it's about. So I, we embrace them, but I see it happen too often that they don't understand. It's a competition. The bands are competing. Yeah. The masqueraders are going on the stage and jumping up and competing to win a prize. Who is the band of the year? It's a big honor. So if you're coming and disrupting this competition, you don't even know it's a competition. Yeah, that's I the talk thing. to many people, they have no clue. Yeah, what, that's what I like, meant earlier. Yeah, that's what I meant earlier about the, the, the side of us that go on that people just think it's just the parade and people that show up, but not knowing there's band competition and everything like that. And the bands, the bands work hard to put out. Saldina and some of the bigger bands have 15, 16 sections, right? Yeah. Of thousands of masqueraders. I think Sally has over 5,000 people. Tribal Nights is almost 2,000. The Revelers and, and Nations, a huge band. We're talking about thousands of costumes that take you four, five, six months to build these costumes. Yeah. Put the money out, look nice, go on the road. All you want to do is free up and play a mass. All you want to do is have fun and enjoy your soca and, and chip down the road and, and, and have fun with your friends. But people come in and hindering that and jumping in and taking over and then playing hip hop. And then you just change anything. That's not what we're here for. You know, you, as I said, you can't go. You're not going to go to a salsa festival somewhere and, and demand they play reggae or soca. You're not going to get it. You're going to be like, this is our thing. You wait your turn kind of thing, you know? Yeah, and everything has its purpose. Yeah. That's 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 like, you can't. Yeah. You think you go yeah. to, you can't go to a big festival somewhere and just demand them to like, this is not your thing. This is not it. We are, we're having our, we're celebrating our culture today. We're celebrating our music today. Just join in. We would want you. We love, we want you to play mass. You know, I wish it's, I wish some of these people who don't really understand the culture much would come and play mass and experience and understand how beautiful it is. Yeah. And that way you could start falling in. You know, there's a reggae section, there's a reggae truck, um, a band this year. No problem with it. It's fine. I like I like that you know the initiative and you're doing something. But you could throw in a little bit of reggae. By the end of the day, carnival is soca. Carnival yeah. is colored. So this is what we're here for. So you know what I mean. <laughs> so since Toronto's like mixed up part. I know you have a single called Toronto. Could you tell us about the single since you were just talking about mixing the cultures in it? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, that song, that song was written by myself, um, Shan, who's my producer, very talented producer, and a, a friend of ours who's a songwriter as well, Chris. It's um that song. Well, first of all, we're coming back out of a pandemic. Yeah. No, no carnival for two years in any way, really. Google in Trinidad, Toronto, wherever. And we said, okay, I want a song that, you know, embodies Toronto, the culture, what we stand for, our parade, our mass and everything. And we jumping up in Toronto because yeah. that's what we do. That we, we party and we jumping up in Toronto, we play mass on the road. This is our culture. So 
what happened is um you know Eb, Eb told me hey let's write something for the culture so i um we started to write it it's entitled toronto and at first i'm like how do i write how do i rhyme toronto <laughs> like how do i write it with toronto i don't really think yeah. so but i was like i had my guitar and i just vibes and right here in the studio we just played along I'm like we jumping up in toronto because that's what we're going to be doing this weekend I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I wrote this song came pretty, pretty easy because all of us had some good ideas. We brought it together and we did, we jump in, we party in, in Toronto because that's what we're doing. And when you hear that, my thing was like, if I'm a masquerade and I put myself in a fan's shoe, I was like, if I'm a fan of, what do I want to hear? We are jumping up in Toronto. We play in West in Toronto. This is fun. This is for the city. This is for the culture. It was so easy and it came together so beautifully. And the single is called Toronto and we jump yeah. it up in Toronto. Simple. <laughs> okay. So, have you been to Carnival in Trinidad? Yes, yes, I've been uh, many times. Yeah. So, what would you say is the similarities or differences between the two carnivals? I mean, the similarities are you know a lot of the DJs are in both. A lot of the, the um some yeah. similar bands. Um, you know, people playing mass. Uh, the and it's it you know it's obviously the music and stuff, but. Um, the numbers are a little different. Toronto is huge, but yeah, it's not as many masqueraders in costumes. Oh. In Trinidad, there's like thousands, tens of thousands of masqueraders. There's oh. dozens and dozens of bands. What the difference where you can't really beat Trinidad is that the Trinidad is the mecca of carnival, and what happened to it to it is that Trinidad has the whole country behind them. Every single yeah. person in the country is either listening to Stoka, participating, going to the events, like the whole country. So we go on a lake show on the CNE, they go on every single street. They go downtown, mm-hmm. every side street, every main street, every intersection, the mass is on every road, passing in front of the bank, passing here and there, wherever. So wow. the, okay. the carnival is just everywhere. There's no yeah. there's no escaping it. And also the country and the, the residents and the Caribbean understand the, the art of carnival and the, the, the power of what this, the, the carnival and they respect it. And here we find that a lot of Caribbean people or non-Caribbean people just don't understand mass. Yeah, the, the, you're supposed to if you if you play mass, you play a costume, and you're you know you're, you're you're supposed to be coming down to Caribana and enjoying yourself. If you're not in costume, you're not supposed to be on the route. That's his house. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, and in Trinidad they respect that. Sometimes and they have big enforcers, you know, they have some yeah. big strong fellas with batons and stuff and an army suit and whatever. Sometimes. Um, like yeah. security guards and if you even step in the band and you don't have a response and you're not playing math they show you out you, know? you wow. cannot come in there because you're respecting yeah, the thousands of people who pay their money to enjoy the day yeah, and course. in Toronto it's so overwhelming because when thousands of people flood the streets you can't get rid of them yeah, they yeah. so that's the biggest difference that when you go to play mass in Trinidad obviously the sun is blazing hot and, the, and it goes two days so from Monday morning to Monday night then Tuesday morning to Tuesday night there's yeah. a lot of mass. You're, you're tired. Um, the energy. It's free food and free drinks. So it's all inclusive drinks. And remember, in Canada, in Toronto, you can't really drink. And yeah. you really do, but you can't. Yeah. Um. So Trinidad, you can just go up to the truck. Uh, give me a double shot or whatever, whatever uh, beer. This, that, this, that. And you're drinking while playing yeah. mass for two full days, mornings and night. So the energy, it's unmatched because of that. But I think it's Toronto can do a few things. And some of the events, and I, I see, I hear some little rumblings from some yeah. of the promoters that. They're trying to bring some of the Trinidadian um, events here, some similar concepts, which is great. Yeah. Um, and some of the bands here have security now. So they have the same thing. They'll have a rope or they'll have like a, a personal fencing with, um, you know, security guards to make sure that you can't get in the band without the wristband. And so they're yeah. trying to simulate that because that is really what the freedom is. Going on the road and not having to worry about, no, you know, nobody, you know? Yeah. Because I remember years ago, that's how it was. Until, because some people complain about the big fence that they put up now on Lakeshore, but being the that's city, to keep people out. Yeah, that, that's yeah. to try and respect the mass. All you want to do is respect the mass. If you play, yeah. costume, play in a costume, come and jump up. If you're not in a costume, stay on the side. That's just, you know. Yeah. So tell us about Louis Saldana and what you're going to be partaking with. Their band this weekend. So Luis Aldin is a, f- a personal family friend band. Um, I know them. I know them uh, for a long time. Yeah, they're one of the biggest mass bands in Toronto. Big up to all the mass bands. Um, but I will be starting my day on Saturday morning, bright and early, with um Saldina on the road. 
They have four trucks, I believe, four or five. Um, I know they have um, DJs such as uh, Dr. G. They have a couple of artists. They have, um, I think, Bandit is with them, Enforcers. They have a few artists passing through as well. We'll be filming the official Toronto music video for the song. We jump it up in Toronto. Yeah. Started okay. in Salina. Um, most of the video will be filmed right there within with the masqueraders on the trucks, on the road. We just jumping around in the van, enjoying mass and filming the video. So if you're in Salina, anybody just check us. You know, yeah. once you, you see me and you see the camera crew, we film it and you're going to be in the video. So okay. that is this Saturday at Caribana Day. Which we call Fet Market. And um, it is, this is a show that actually some of the, the local Calypsonian Association called Okpa and some of the local um, artists got together and said, let's do a show um, highlighting us, which is about seven or eight of us from Toronto, the local yeah. local um, artists, which is great. It's highlighting local talent. It's fully backed by a band. It's at the Latvian Center in um in Scarborough, in North York, I believe. It's not a huge capacity. There's only like a, a couple hundred tickets left or something like that. So yeah. you could you could um you know anybody who's who wants to hear a live band and, and, and a showcase of only Toronto talent will be there tomorrow evening. I think from around short time, I'd be around uh, ten, okay. you know, ten p.m. or so. So that's. July twenty seventh for people watching. July twenty seventh, so Wednesday. So yeah. as in, yeah, 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 yeah. Wednesday, July twenty seventh, we got a live show. Body culture, I'm on. Um, yeah, and you know, representing the city, representing Toronto, while also just going out there and, and flying the flag of Trinidad to you as well. <laughs> okay, so thanks for the interview. Yes, man. Yeah, I man. appreciate first it. Thanks first a lot, man. Got, Worldwide way, man. Yes. Yeah, man. First time you got a so kind is from the city with the interview, so you know, you're a first. WorldwideEntertainmentTV.com. Hey! Hey, everyone watching Worldwide Entertainment TV. This is Ashley. Let us know your thoughts below and hit that notification bell after subscribing. Visit WWETVN.com to check out this Worldwide exclusive.